Hi, this is a Duke 3D level design course, episode 2, Textures. Enter the 3D mode, and let's add some textures. Hover your mouse cursor over the floor and hit the V key. You will see a black screen displaying only the brown brick texture. This screen lists all the floor and ceiling textures in use within your map. If you had pressed V while pointing at a solid wall, it would have displayed all the textures used for solid walls. Press V once more to access a complete list of all available textures. Use the arrow buttons or mouse wheel to browse through all textures. Use Ctrl plus mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Press the left mouse button or Enter to select a texture. You can apply textures to the walls in the same manner. Simply hover your mouse cursor over a wall and press the V key twice. Choose any texture you like. Notice that some textures have the pink color. This pink color represents transparent pixels in the game, typically used for sprites or mask walls. However, if you apply it to a solid object like the floor, ceiling or a non-masked wall, it will appear as black in the game. We will explore this concept more later on. For now, select the texture without the pink color. Additionally, you can see that some textures have multiple frames, indicating they are animated textures. While you can use any of these individual frames, only the first frame, usually with a name assigned, will activate the full texture animation. Textures with assigned names often have specific functions. To save time, you can copy and paste your wall textures instead of doing it repeatedly. Just hover your mouse over the texture wall, press Tab to copy the texture, then move the cursor to the wall you want to paste it to and press Enter. At the bottom left we have a summary of the texture we copied, and below that we have information about the texture our cursor is pointing at. Here we can see the texture number, its shading, palette, and so on. Let's put some nice texture for the ceiling. Note that only textures with dimensions which are powers of 2 will look proper. For example, 32 by 64 would look normal, but 31 by 63 would not. This doesn't necessarily mean that you can't use textures with dimensions other than powers of 2, but floors and ceilings will usually look meshed, and wall textures will usually break at odd intervals. To shade an object, aim your mouse cursor at it and press keypad plus to brighten it, or keypad minus to darken it. Use the arrows on the numpad to scale the texture on the walls. Unfortunately, due to the technical aspects of the engine, we can't scale the texture on the floor or ceiling so accurately. We can only reduce the texture by 2 by pressing the E key. We can move the texture by pressing the Shift key and the left mouse button. For precise movement, press Alt and use the arrows on the numpad. Use the angle brackets keys to automatically align the texture on the wall. To flip a texture on a wall or floor, press the F key. In the latest version of EDIC32, we can also rotate the texture on the wall by 90 degrees by pressing the R key. Press the forward slash key to reset the texture settings. To change the palette color of an object, highlight it and press Alt plus P then enter any number from 0 to 29. Palettes 26 through 29 are the fog palettes. Not all of the palette values will actually change the color of the object. I will post a link to the full list of all palettes in the game in the video description. Finally, let's create the sky, or in the other words, the parallax effect. For this, let's first choose a suitable texture. Some sky textures consist of several images, so in order to display them correctly, you need to select the first texture in the list. Now move the cursor over the ceiling and press P. Parallax effect can also be applied to the floor. In the next tutorial, we will dive into sector editing.